The K2 Plus is the latest evolution of the next generation flagship K-series 3D printers. Plus means this model now comes with a larger build volume of 350mm cubed. The K2 Plus has many new upgrades, including active chamber temperature control, server stepper motors for the core XY motion system, and dual motors for the Z-axis. Additionally, it has built-in smart features such as the hands-free auto bed level system, input shaping and AI calibration, built-in cameras, new extruder with a built-in cutter, and fast printing speeds up to 600 millimeters per second. Along with the printer, we're also checking out the new CFS Creality's filament system for multicolor and multi-material printing. Starting off with some specs, the K2 Plus is a big printer and is built with a solid and sturdy die-cast aluminium alloy frame. This is enclosed with acrylic panels at the sides, a glass lid and a glass hinge front door with a magnetic latch. The front door hinge now opens wider and is free of cutouts and completely seals around the edges when closed. Having the enclosure is good to keep a controlled internal temperature which is perfect for printing demanding filaments like ASA, ABS or reinforced nylons. Taking care of the internal heating, the K2 Plus features an active heated chamber which can reach temperatures up to 60 degrees, which is perfect for printing high temperature filaments. For other filaments like PLA, the chamber's fan will automatically turn on for cooling when the temperature exceeds 35 degrees, and this can be adjusted to suit the material, so there's no need to leave the door or lid open. Either side of the chamber's heating fan, we have two exhaust fans with air purifying active carbon filters. The K2 Plus has a big build volume of 350 millimeters cubed, which is plenty of room for batch printing or medium to large size models. This is a decent size increase compared to the K1 Max and the K1C's build volumes, allowing you to print more in one go. Inside we have a core XY motion system with a smooth linear rail for the X axis and linear rods for the Y axis. The print bed platform is kept level and moves along dual lead screws and four linear rods. On the bed, we have a magnetic flexible build plate with a single-sided textured PEI print bed surface. The flexible plate makes it easy to remove 3D printed models once they cool, simply by lightly flexing it and removing the printed part. Reinstalling is easy as it has two handy alignment tabs at the rear to ensure it's always put back in the correct position. The K2 Plus has an auto bed level system and auto Z offset. And for users this is great as there's no need to make adjustments manually and the bed level is totally hands free and the process is completely taken care of by the machine. The bed heats up quickly and it reaches a maximum temperature of 120 degrees. The entire system is automated and monitored. It features two AI cameras, one positioned on the chamber side for remote monitoring, checking for failures and to capture time-lapse footage. The other camera is mounted on the tool head which is used to optimise the flow rate. The K2 Plus comes with a refreshed tool head assembly. They've removed the extruder locking lever and added a filament cutter, which makes it easier to load and remove filaments. Built in, there's also a runout sensor, levelling sensor, nozzle camera and model cooling fan. The printer comes with a hardened steel tipped 0.4mm nozzle installed and this can reach temperatures of up to 350 degrees. These high flow nozzles are a new part and slightly different to the unicorn nozzles found on the previous K series. In addition to the main print model cooling, there's two auxiliary cooling fans that are located on both sides of the chamber to ensure efficient part cooling. The inside is well lit with LEDs, making it easy to see what's printing, and these can be turned on or off. For printing files, we have a USB port at the side for plugging in a USB stick with prepared slice files or files can also be directly loaded over to the machine over Wi-Fi and stored on the internal memory. And the printer can also be connected via the rear Ethernet port if you need. The prints can be started and controlled from the color touchscreen and making it easy to see the screen, it now has an adjustable angle, which is good if you have the printer set up on the ground or on a shelf. So the printer arrives in a large heavy box. There's a bit of unpacking to do with everything neatly packed inside. Once it's unboxed, there's four transport screws to remove from around the bed 
and these are clearly marked with yellow arrows. In the package we get a sticker sheet, a quick installation guide for the K2 Plus, a quick guide for the CFS, we have the touch screen, the screen mounting base, a pack of filament swatches, a nice toolbox with USB drive, cutters, a scraper and tools. We have a spare 0.4mm nozzle, the external spool holder, four 500 gram rolls of Crowley's Hyper PLA with RFID tags in blue, red, black and white. We have the power cable, a filament buffer with mounting hardware, a few cables for the CFS, PTFE tubes for the external spool holder and the CFS, and finally a bonus accessory box with a few spare parts. After unpacking, there's only a few steps needed to get the printer up and running. The manual has clear instructions on how to assemble the printer, and it's a straightforward process. We start by attaching the screen base to the frame, plugging in the cable into the back of the display, and then clipping it into the base. Next up, there's two bolts to remove at the back, and these are reused to install the external spool holder. The PTFE tube is connected from the spool holder to the back of the printer. Now we place the glass lid on top of the printer, and then plug in the power cable and turn it on. Switching on the printer, it takes about one minute to boot up, and on the initial power up, we need to set up and configure the printer, and run the self-check system. This will check and test the hot end, the hot bed, all the fans, run the input shaping, and set the auto bed level. With the printer ready to go, we can load a roll of the included filament. What's good about these new rolls of filament is they have RFID tags that contain information about the filament. So at the side of the printer, just above the external spool holder, we have the RFID reader, which allows us to swipe the spool, and the info will be automatically updated to the printer showing the filament type and colour. And for other filaments without RFID tags, we can add the information manually in the slicer or on the touch screen. To load the filament, we just pass it up through the PTFE tube all the way to the extruder, and then on the touch screen, select extrude. The printer will purge out the filament, and now it's ready for the first print. For the first print, we'll begin with a high-speed Benchy boat that's included as a pre-sliced file on the printer. It's a fast print for a Benchy boat, and it's a good first test print to check and confirm the printer's working well. The finished model printed in 14 minutes, and looking closely, there is some visible layer lines and some of the corners aren't as sharp as they could be, but overall it printed out well for a super fast Benchy. To set up the CFS, we first install the buffer to the back of the printer with two bolts. Then the PTFE tubes and cables are connected. It's quick to set up, and now we can load some spools of filament. It's automatically loaded, and the RFID tags are red, and we can see the information displayed on the screen. So what is the CFS? The CFS is Creality's filament system, which is mainly used for multicolour and multi-material printing. It holds four rolls of filament, and is able to automatically change and select filament as needed. This allows you to have multiple colours, or different materials loaded and ready to go. Not only that, the CFS is able to be used as a filament backup system, which automatically switches from a finished roll to the next roll of filament of the same type if one runs out, which is a good system to have for larger models or when spools are running low. The airtight sealed unit has a humidity and temperature sensor that keeps filament dry, clean and ready to use, and we can monitor the status at the front via the LCD screen. Inside a spring-loaded bar keeps spools from moving around that's especially useful when they get lighter as they run out. Another thing, it's very easy to perform maintenance with the tubes easily accessible from the underside. The CFS is also expandable and can connect four CFS units to the rear hub, allowing you a total of 16 colors. With the CFS set up and filament loaded, we'll test out the color changes with a pre-sliced colored benching model. This model prints with four colors using blue, white, red, and black. Once the print starts, there's nothing to touch and the color changes automatically. The 
finish model took 26 minutes to complete and all the colour changes were smooth. Creality has recently upgraded the slicing software and now we're using Creality Print 5.1. It's a big upgrade and offers a clean, intuitive user interface, making it easier to prepare and slice files. There's default presets for slicing files which I find work well and these can be easily customised and adjusted for the model's requirements. Once we have a model sliced, it can be sent directly to the K2 Plus over Wi-Fi or saved on a USB drive. It's good using Wi-Fi and a lot quicker than having to move files from a PC to a printer with an SD card or a USB drive. Within the software, we can control and monitor the one machine or multiple 3D printers, making it easy to send jobs, adjust settings and watch over the printer. The prints can also be monitored from the Creality Cloud app on a mobile device. For the next print, we're printing the June model kit at 120% scale. With lots of small parts, it needs a good first layer to capture all the details, and the auto bed level along with the PI build plate created an excellent first layer. The finished print looks good and to complete, all the parts are assembled to build the model. Next up we have this Hot Wheels logo and this is printed using the CFS that automatically changes between the red, yellow and white colours. One thing I was interested to see was the filament colour changes and how long it takes to complete the process. The colour changes ended up taking around a minute 30 for each colour, which was pretty good. The finish print looks clean and while it's hard to see, there is some slight yellow colouring in the white. But with increasing the size of the prime tower and the purge settings in the software, should fix this. Another thing to keep in mind with multicolour prints is the filament waste. For this print we had 12 grams of waste for a 100 gram model. So filling up the build plate with more models will definitely help with this. For this print we're printing a Mandalorian model with Creality's Hyper Black PLA. This model is designed to be printed without any supports and it's fairly quick to print taking about 2 hours and 25 minutes. The finish print had some fine webbing which was easy to clean off and the model turned out great with a clean and smooth surface finish. For this next print, we're printing a Hue Forge design of a Stormtrooper. The CFS will automatically change colours at set layer heights to give a detailed painted look. And while we could do manual filament swaps with a layer pause, using the CFS makes the whole process easier to print. The finish print of the Stormtrooper turned out well and has a neat and interesting design that was easy to print. So a good thing about having a larger build volume is we can print objects with different colours using the print by object option. For this example it will print each object one at a time rather than by layers so we only need colour changes between the objects. It's a great way to save time on colour changes if you need a few different coloured items all at once.
Of course, with a larger build plate, you can still prepare and print a huge production batch in one go if you need. The orange vase is printed using the spiral mode, which starts with a few base layers and then prints one 0.4mm wall around the edges to create the model. The PEI plate holds the model well when printing and allows the printed model to be easily removed as soon as it starts to cool. The final print turned out great and the printer performed as expected. A super clean print with a nice surface finish. Overall the K2 Plus combo is well suited for someone who's looking for the latest and best Creality 3D printer that's easy to use, has a large build volume, able to produce coloured prints and work with a variety of materials. The K2 Plus is a really well built printer that works great and with the multicolour CFS combo, it has everything you need in a professional workshop printer.